questions wherever you are, welcome to the Must Read Alaska Show. Coming to you from somewhere in Alaska. This is the place where we talk about, you guessed it, Alaska. Where we keep the mainstream media on their toes and where we are standing up for what's right in a world run by leftists. You can find out more by heading over to mustreadalaska.com and also checking out the Must Read Alaska YouTube channel for some really great content. But first, let's get this party started. Welcome, everybody, to the Must Read Alaska Show. I'm your host, John Quick, coming to you live from somewhere in Alaska. I want to thank everybody that listens, watches, and reads Must Read Alaska. If you want to help keep the lights on, just go to mustreadalaska.com on the right-hand side. There's a little donate button every $5, $10, $100. Helps keep the lights on here at Must Read Alaska. If you want to sponsor the Must Read Alaska Show, just email me, John, J-O-H-N, at mustreadalaska.com. I'm sure everybody's very excited about the sunny weather that's happening because, oh, my gosh, did we have enough snow to last a lifetime this winter This is a very special uh, highlight that we're doing not only this month, but next month we're doing candidate highlights. So for folks out there that are running for office in the state of Alaska, um, and you're going to be on the ballot this this coming fall, you're invited to take part in this. We're going to do 15-minute segments. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat or unaffiliated or nonpartisan or Libertarian or the Green Party or anything in between. Uh, There's a pinned post for our Facebook page. Just go to that and sign up. There's a link there to sign up. Uh, But today we have Jared Gerker. Did I say it right, Jared? That's that's right. You got it exactly right. (laughs) Well, I'm excited that you're here with us today. Hear a little bit about your story and and kind of why you're running for office. So first, introduce yourself a little bit and tell folks uh, where you're running for office, uh, you know, what district and where that's located. Yeah, thank you so much. And, And first, thank you guys for hosting this. This is such a great uh, such a great idea and such a great opportunity to let candidates get out there and talk about, uh, you know, get their message out there. So thank you. I really appreciate you, John. Uh, so my name is Jared Gerker. I'm running for the state Senate here in uh, Chugiak, Eagle River, running to represent Senate District L. Uh, so we're we're taking on we're taking on a pretty tough incumbent, but it's it's a battle worth having, we feel like. Awesome. So why are you running for office? Everybody's got their story. Tell us about why, what kind of spurred you to throw your name in the hat? Yeah, no, it's and that's that's the most important question. Uh, you know, for a number of years, my my wife and I have been you know really upset with how things have been going in the state. Right, uh, it really feels like in a lot of ways we're going in, in the wrong direction. It doesn't feel like we have a real solid uh, fiscal plan or any fiscal strategy. Uh, you know, crime has been a has been a huge problem in the state. You might recall from you know you might recall SB ninety one from a number of years ago, and that created a whole lot of issues for us. Um, And so my wife and I have been frustrated for a number of years with how things have been going, but uh, the timing just didn't quite feel right. We, you know, we just had a baby last year. That was our first. And so we were like, you know what, this is a brand new season of life. We're parents. Uh, We really just want to lean into this new season uh, instead. However, um, last fall, uh, my, my, my brother was murdered here in Anchorage Mm. and it completely changed our entire, you know, outlook and view, and it completely changed our entire trajectory. Uh, it really lit a fire, you know, in my belly and, and belly of my family, where we, we sat down and we talked and said, look, we feel like this could have been prevented. This was an avoidable situation, if not for, you know, weak on, weak on crime policies that are, that are coming down from Juneau. And so we, uh, so we decided to throw our hat in the rain because this is a fight worth having. Um, and so that's, that's what spurred us on. That's what got us into this race. Um, you know, obviously, and obviously we're conservative, we're passionate about all these, you know, all the other issues, f- fiscal issues, you know, all those energy stuff as well and protecting state rights and, and all that. Uh, but first and foremost, the number one issue that drove us into this race was, was criminal justice. Our system is broken and we want to, uh, we want to take that on. We want to try and try and fix it. So what would be some of the top priorities if you were elected, what would you focus on? Yeah. So obviously law enforcement uh, is a big one. They need as much support as possible. Uh, you know, I'm out there and I'm campaigning, talking to people, uh, talking to law enforcement specifically. And the, the thing I keep hearing back is we don't really have a, we don't have a policing problem. We have a judicial process problem. We have a problem where an officer can arrest somebody multiple times in a single evening, and then the courts release them every single time that evening with no or a very reduced bail. So we need to get we need to get serious about uh, about bail reform in our in our state. 
Uh, we need to get serious about actually processing uh, these cases when they, they come before us. You know, in my brother's case, we've sat, uh, you know, in discovery hearings for the last about six months. And we've heard cases that are seven years old that are mm -hmm. still in discovery. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. And that's, you know, a variety of factors. Obviously, you know, we had SB 91 that backlogged everything, right? Uh, and then we got rid of SB 91, but there's still some aspects of that that linger around. Uh, but then COVID happened and then the courts made a decision to stop hearing cases uh, during, uh, during, COVID, or during COVID. And so that backlogged it even more. So now we've got this insane situation where you can have people that are accused of horrific, violent crimes that are just out back out on the streets because we're too backlogged to give them a speedy trial. And that's completely unacceptable. And so that, that needs to be, that needs to be everybody's focus in, in my opinion. Uh, and then other policy issues and goals, uh, we need a realistic spending cap. You know, we know our economy is boom and bust, right? We know that when oil goes boom, we, we know that we, we spend a lot of money, we go crazy, we start new programs and everybody gets a little bit of something. Um, but we also know that when it goes bust, then we find ourselves in this situation where we're, we're trying to either cut services or cut, you know, cut expenses or raise revenues as in taxing the PFD or an income tax or a sales tax. And I think what we really just need is some, some financial strategy. <laughs> Let's put in a realistic spending cap so that when it goes boom, we're putting money aside. So when it goes bust, we can maintain a level, uh, level government services without having to either cut or tax. Nice. So what do you think separates you from your uh, other folks that are running against you, the incumbent? What's what separates you two? Uh, what are the differences? Yeah. You know, I think one of the, the biggest things is, uh, you know, the, the motivating factor for me for, you know, while I'm in this, this is intensely, uh, this is intensely personal and we're very driven. Uh, nobody's going to be more motivated to fight this fight than, than, than me and my family. Uh, so I think that's one of the, the bigger things. Obviously, so the incumbent is uh, is somebody who ran as a Republican, ran as a conservative, got to Juno, and then just couldn't wait to join the Democrat-dominated majority and put the Democrats in control of the state Senate. And that's that's completely unacceptable. You know, and as I'm out here and I'm campaigning, I'm talking to people all over Chukiak, Eagle River. That's one of the most common things people say is like, just if just be what you say you're going to be. Uh, if you say you're a conservative, do conservative things. And um, and so that's that's one of the things I I'm a straight shooter, right? Like I'm going to tell it like it is. I'm going to I'm going to be who I say I'm going to be. I'm not I'm not going to make something up, you know, to try and get elected and then get elected and, and go do something completely different. Uh, I'm a conservative. I, I want to see conservative policies. I want to see us retake the state Senate uh, and work with the Republican controlled House and work with the Republican governor to pass Republican meaningful legislation. Nice. Well, tell some tell us where folks can get in touch with you if they're listening in and they want to help out with the campaign or donate or give you a call. Give us all those details. And again, one more time on what district you're running and what race. Yeah, thanks so much. So we're running for Senate District L in Shugiak, Eagle River. Uh, best way to get a hold of me if you go to jaredforalaska.com. Uh, that's my website. If you want to do a little bit more reading up, if you want to donate, perhaps. Uh, there's also a, a link there to send me uh, send me an email directly at info, uh, info at jaredforalaska.com. Uh, we respond to those regularly. Uh, we're on Facebook at Jared for Alaska, uh, Jared for State Senate, Jared Gerker for State Senate. Uh, so we're on Facebook. Give us a follow. Give us a like. Uh, shoot us a message. We're, we're, we're super accessible. We're responsive. And uh, yeah, we're just really excited to, to get this going. Nice. Well, folks listening in, I'll put all those links in the podcast description. Jared, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the Must Read Alaska show. For folks listening in and you want to help keep the lights on, just go to mustreadalaska.com. On the right-hand side, there's a little donate button. Every $5, $10, $100 helps keep the lights on. If you want to sponsor the Must Read Alaska show, just email me, John JohnJOHN at mustreadalaska.com. This month and next month and probably the month after, we're going to be doing candidate highlights. So if you are running for office in the state of Alaska and you're going to be on this fall's ballot, uh, go to our Facebook, Must Read Alaska's Facebook, pinned to the top of that page is the candidate spotlight post. Click on that link and schedule yourself or send it to a friend. We'd love to have you on. Doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, Republican, or anything in between, you're welcome on to do a candidate highlight. So thanks so much, Jared, again, for joining us. Folks, go check them out. And we hope everybody has a phenomenal week, uh, week this week. Until next time, I'm John Quick from somewhere in Alaska. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, John. Appreciate you.